public. Including our next guest who calls the report deeply troubling. Florida Congressman Ron DeSantis is a member of the House Oversight Committee, joins us from Statuary Hall. So, Congressman, you had to go into that super secret skiff room there at the Capitol to read it. And I know you can't really tell us what was in it, but you can tell us generally what it's about, right? I mean, your feelings regarding what is contained in it. Sure. I mean, I'm reading it, and it's a very succinct, straightforward memo. And there were a couple times as I'm reading this thing where I'm just like shaking my head. You've got to be kidding me. I can't believe they did that. Uh, so I think it's something that is really significant. I think that the American people need to see it. Uh, there's growing support in the House to make this public so that the American people can see. And here's the thing. The memo is done in such a way where you can easily make it public. There aren't, uh, it's classified top secret, but there aren't sources and methods here. So I don't think that would be a problem. Let's get that right. out there so the American people can see how this whole collusion thing was going on during the during the campaign does it uh, can you say this does it help us answer this question did the Obama administration use Intel from the dossier uh, from Chris Steele specifically to surveil Trump officials I think that's one of the central uh, issues in the memo and I definitely want all Americans to be able to read uh, what actually happened in that respect okay so there is a trending right now hashtag release the memo uh, is Paul Ryan going to, is he for releasing this at this point? I think he will, but you know, the speaker's done a good job press. And remember, Rod Rosenstein fought tooth and nail to not produce this information to the Congress. And we were thinking about, well, why would he have done that? Um, and I think it's because there's information in there that doesn't make either the DOJ or the Bureau look. And this is not the whole DOJ or the whole Bureau. This is a select cast of characters. Um, but Paul Ryan stood up to him and said, no, we got to get it. So I think so. And, and here's the thing. Remember that Peter Strzok text message where mm -hmm. they're in Andrew McCabe's office with Lisa Page and he says, you know, I'd like to think what you said that Trump can't win is true, but I'm afraid we at the FBI can't take that risk and we need an insurance policy. So as I'm reading the memo, I kept thinking back to that text message mm -hmm. and is this investigation right. the insurance policy because somebody like Strzok wanted to keep Trump out of the White House? And I'm just wondering why Christopher Steele felt like he had to go meet with David Corn of Mother Jones. Did he feel as though he had to push back against a would-be Trump presidency? Did he feel as though he had to push back against James Comey possibly reopening the investigation to Hillary Clinton's emails after it was found on, uh, on uh, Anthony Weiner's laptop? And if so, why? Well, I think for sure Fusion GPS believed that. So did was Fusion pushing Steele uh, to do that? Now, remember, this, this memo doesn't really answer, but the question about what was Steele's relationship with the FBI, if he was a paid source right. or he was somebody who was working with them, to go talk to the media, I mean, that is just totally yeah. outrageous. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why Grassley and Graham won Steele investigated. Sure. But yeah, they're, they're running interference. They are trying to affect the right. outcome of the election. They're there's no doubt about that's what they were doing. One word answer, Congressman, after this is released, will heads roll at the DOJ or the FBI? I hope so. All right. All right. Thank could, you very much. Ron he, DeSantis. He could be the next governor of Florida. Uh, thanks, uh, Thank you, sir. Congressman. Uh, thanks. Straight ahead. Coming up, treating their dogs better than their kids. Brand new details into the house of horrors in California where children were starved, beaten, tortured, and only allowed to shower once a year. Plus, a 13-year-old girl climbs a tree to rescue an American flag that was tangled in that tree. She's here to tell us what inspired this patriotic but dangerous gesture.